Hello, I hope everyone is doing great. So in this video, we are going to talk about the advanced UI path document understanding features. So these are a series of videos and we are in the first part of the video series. So in this, we'll be using the UI path product 20.10 version and we'll be mostly focusing on the advanced side of document understanding so if you are new to document understanding i do recommend you to go through the basics from the uipath academy you can find two different courses in the academy uipath document understanding overview and document understanding tutorial for processing invoices so once you have covered the basics from these two then you'll be able to easily follow the advanced features that I'm going to explain to you. So to continue, we have a simple a scenario that we are going to work on to discuss about these features. So this scenario is like this. We have four main steps in the extraction of data, talking about the documents, We'll be using invoices, purchase orders, and there's another document called Form 4, which I'll be showing you later, and the Form 10K, which contains financial information, some utility bills, and some account creation forms of a bank that contains handwritten data. Also, to in increase the complexity a little bit, one document may contain multiple document types, which means if you take a single PDF file, in one page you might have an invoice and in another page you might have a purchase order. So how are you going to process that is the next step. And the user will provide the folder path where all the documents are stored so that the robot will pick up the folders, uh, documents from there and process them. So once the robot identifies the document and start processing, we go to the classifying section. So when you're classifying each document, you need to identify what type of a document that is, mm. which means you need to identify whether the document is an invoice, whether it's a purchase order, credit bill, or something else. Next, once you identify the category, you need to copy the document in the input folder to another folder. Let's call it the processed documents folder. And you're not just going to copy it. You have to create a folder based on the document type. So in other words, if it's an invoice, you need to create a folder called invoice in that folder and move the document into that folder. Also, if the document has multiple types, just like I mentioned over here, it needs to split the document and copy each part into its respective folder. So let's say, you have one document called document A. In the first page, you have invoice. Second page, you have purchase order. So that document has to be split. And the first page of that document should go into invoices folder. And the second page should go into the purchase order folder. And the third scenario is extract and validate. So for extraction, we'll be using several machine learning models like invoices, purchase orders and utility bills through AI fabric and we'll be writing different validation logics to identify how we are going to validate whether it's going to automatically verify whether we need to present the validation station or whether we need to present the action center as a task and finally once you have extracted and validated the data, you need to train the AI models. Also, you need to train the classifiers 
and the final output should go into several Excel files. So I'll show you how it, the output should look like. This, too, this is just the scenario that we are going to work on throughout this series. So to do that, we'll be using the document understanding framework. We'll be focusing on parallel processing the documents, digitization, use of intelligent keyword classifier, and we'll be also uh, discussing about how to classify uh, documents using the action center. Also, we'll be focusing on how to invoke other processes parallel to your main process to handle different other tasks such as splitting the documents, moving documents into different folders, extracting the data, writing into Excel, and so on. When it comes to data extraction, we'll be using machine learning extractor with AI fabric, regex extractor, form extractor, and intelligent form extractor. So we'll be covering almost all the extractors we have. And we'll be also using the validation station or doing the validation action through Action Center. And post-processing, we'll be focusing on extracting training classifiers, generate training data, and exporting it to Excel. So these are the main areas that we'll be focusing on throughout this series. And in the first part of the series, which is in this video, we'll be focusing on how to set up the process, basically, uh, setting up different assets in the orchestrator, creating the uh, workflow file as a orchestration process, and we'll be focusing on reading the assets, obtaining input folder, parallel processing the documents, and also digitization. The classification, data extraction, those things will be in the other videos because those are pretty big topics that we need to discuss separately. So let's get to the uh, setting up the environment. So as you saw earlier, we have several things to do. We need to yeah, now I can show this. So as I explained the scenario, we have all the files in a folder called input files. We have account creation forms, which contain handwritten data. And we also have form 10k, which looks something like this. So these are all publicly available data. And in this one, we'll be focusing on extracting this balance sheet in the second page. And form 4 is also something similar, it contains financial data. So we'll be focusing on extracting some of the data from this document as well. So for now, uh, we'll just go through. So this combined file contains two different documents. In the first page, you can see it's an invoice. And in the second page, um, it's a purchase order. So let's see how we are going to process that. So, so we'll be having all the files in an input folder and user will be selecting the path to this folder. Once the da data is processed, the data should be moved or the Excel file should be created in another folder called output data. And then in that folder, you need to have separate folders for each document type, basically based on the classification. So similarly, as you see here, it should have all these folders and in each folder you will find the excel file for that particular document and the other part is moving the folder, uh, files into different folders as a part of the classification as we discussed so that should go into process documents folder and here we have a folder called finance and comings and the different types so all these folders should be 
created automatically. And in each folder, you can see the document. Um, and the training data. This is the next part. The training data for invoices and purchase orders should also get created in separate folders like this. So let's see how we can set it up. So these folder parts I have paste into an asset. So let's get to the UiPath orchestrator to see how we can configure this um, file parts. So this is my orchestrator and I have a separate folder over here for this series of videos called document understanding and inside that I'm having different assets. So the first asset over here is the document understanding API key. So you can get the API key from your cloud platform and create a credential asset because it's uh, this key should not be exposed publicly. It's good to have in a credential asset. So all you need to do is you just need to create a credential asset and you can just keep the username as anything because it doesn't matter and under password paste the api key and click on update or save so that's the first asset so we'll talk about how we are going to use this asset later when we are going through the workflow the next asset is the document storage path which means we are going we are we are going to store the processed documents uh, like this so it should be inside the processed documents folder and the finance incoming and this folder should be automatically created so i i have provided this file path or the folder path in an asset called doc storage path so that's the value that you see here so it's a text type the next asset is the invoice training data which means uh, the training data that you generate by validating the documents basically the invoices uh, so this training data will be uploaded into a fabric to data manager later to train the models so we have a training trainer output folder over here which i showed you earlier and we have two folders invoices and purchase orders so for both folders you can create two assets invoice training data asset and purchase order training data so that's the uh, two assets you see here so over here the invoice training data is pointed to the invoice folder in train output and DO training data is pointed to purchase order folder. Uh, so all you need to do is you just need to give the folder path. So once you have done that, the next one is where you are going to store your um, Excel output in the output data folder. So again, in that output data folder, you have separate folders that needs to be created automatically depending on the document type. So we know the file folder path until the output data folder. So you can set that folder path in output data folder path as such as you see here. So you have altogether five assets that you can configure and once you have provided these folder paths, you have addressed several scenarios that were there in, the, in our scenario over here. Create folder paths for each document category to move the documents there and 
once we are extracting we need a separate folder to train all the training data and we need a separate folder to store the data in Excel so that's what we have just created okay so now we have done the creation of assets the next part is creating the workflow so when you open UFR studio you just need to create a new solution you can use the orchestration process instead of blank process over here why I'm saying to use the orchestration process is because when you are doing the validation of the classifier and also the data will be using the action center and will be needing to create tasks in action center and wait until the user replies back or basically wait until the user completes the action so this is coming in as a part of the long running transactions where you have to enable the persistence activities or enable persistence in your solution so it's always good to use the orchestration process so click on this and create a simple solution for orchestration process I have one already created so I'm not going to create one now so once you have created the solution you'll get a page or screen like this but you will have less number of dependencies over here so what you can do is you can go to dependencies and right click and go to manage and you need to install several dependencies for this to work so you, you can search for UiPath document understanding ML activities once you go into all packages, uh, you just need to type document understanding and it will show you. So go there and install the latest version that you have. Likewise, you need document understanding ML activities, intelligent OCR activities and if you are using the omni page OCR uh, you need to use the omni page activities since I'm using that I have the omni page activities and omni page bundle extended activities so by default you'll be having your path persistence activities and system activities available because we created the orchestration process which includes persistence activities so once you have configured that you get all your dependencies over here and you will also get the taxonomy manager available on the top ribbon so these documents i'll share these documents with you and you can see the description of the chat folder in the video description uh, you can download from there so the next thing is you need to create the taxonomies for these documents so go to taxonomy manager and you can create a group and a category so those two are what you see here the group is finance incoming is the category and these two are the folders that you see in these folders uh, so if you go to process documents you see the finance which is the category over, uh, sorry the group over here and if you go inside that incoming is the category and inside that these are the different document types that we have over here so 
as you see in here I have created different uh, categories or different document types for invoices form 10k form 4 account creation and religious so you just need to include or create the fields that you need to extract through this solution so these are some of the fields that I have used for invoices so for invoice number I have used type text and it says requires reference which means once you have ticked or checked this the AI model or the extraction will always look for this particular reference the invoice number in the document if this is not selected which means it will not look for this particular reference so why this is needed is because sometimes you can find documents where certain values can be there and it cannot be there so in that case you can use this option but use it wisely because if you uncheck this it will not be used in your training of your AI models so for now I have selected that so this is my invoice number I have the invoice date as a date type when the address has address type so you can find different data types in this drop down text number data and so on so this is address and the total amount of the invoice is going to be a number and here we count the line items so line item if, uh, is a type of table and under that you can have different other columns like the description again of type text quantity as number unit price number and line price likewise you can create different types for the type of documents as well so for form 10k i'm going to extract the company name which is in the first page and i have selected this and the balance sheet as you saw in the document is going to be a table so let me show you quickly in so in this document, in the second page, this is the balance sheet. So we have the first column where you have all the assets and liabilities and so on. And we have two columns for the two, uh, two years, 2020 and 2019. So because of that, here we have the balance sheet as table. And we have the first column, balance sheet item, which is the text and the current year which is the number because it contains numbers the previous year is again numbers and for form 4 I have several fields so let me show you a document form 4 is something similar to this so from this um, I'll be needing to extract the reporting person which is over here the first one is text and the reporting person address which you can see over here right below the name on in two lines issuer name is what you see here the second date of earliest transaction which is the number three over here amendment date is blank but i'm extracting that as a date so here this is the tricky part here we have the relationship which you see over here in number five box so it's not a straightforward value that we are extracting this x can be placed anywhere in front of uh, either of these so in this scenario the x is placed in front of director 
So we don't know in on in front of which it will be placed. So we need to have a different mechanism to extract that. So what I'm doing is for relationship the data type is set. So in set we can add any number of values which could be available. So I'm typing the exact text what you see over here. The first one is director, officer and 10% owner and the other for the fourth one. So I'm ignoring what's there inside the brackets. So once you have added these four as set, save it and then we are going to enter securities which is the table one portion, this section. So in here you have again, uh, it's a little bit complex because over here one column it has multiple sub columns. So what I'm doing is I'm considering the table from the um, including the sub columns. So. I have another type as table which I have named as ND securities and I have the title this is the first column transaction date is the second third is the deemed transaction date and I have the transaction code so over here the third column has two sub columns because of that I'm using the transaction code over here and then I'm going to use the security amount which is this amount column mm. and the acquired or deposited which is the this A or D value is going to which we are going to extract. So in the document you can see it contains the letter D and security price which is this amount next to the letter D so all these are text and the beneficiary owned is a number which is this column where you have this number 5 and ownership form is the next It's again text because it contains characters and lastly is the nature of ownership. So those are the columns that I'm extracting. So based on that you just need to create your taxonomy and for account creation I have the application type date, zip number, and so on. So I can show you that against um, so for account creation first one is application type which is it could be we have two options the application type could be a new now it could be an update type. So we don't know on which box the user will tick. So we can use one box and identify if it is blank, that means it's an update. If it's new, if it has a tick, that means it's a new application. So just an assumption. So for application type, I'm using the option boolean from this drop down because it could be true or false in my case and for application date it's going to be date because I'm extracting only handwritten data safe number is what you see over here account number is this part name of the entity is what you see over here so it could be anywhere inside these two lines and so it's text 
phase of incorporation is going to be this section where you have this USA uh, written and finally the customer address is of address type which can be in all of these lines in this section line 1, 2, 3, district, city, town, village and postcode so we are not worried how the data is placed we just make it as address type and save so likewise you can do the same for purchase orders you can create all the data types or fields that you need to extract your number text your date file name address vendor name vendor address it's again address type <laughs> shipping name delivery date and the few items which comes in as uh, line items which will be i show you in this these are the line items so we could have the line number which can be the code description quantity unit price and line amount so you can place the data types accordingly likewise you can do the same for utility bills so if you don't have utility bills don't worry about it for now uh, think about this first section purchase order invoices to purchase orders okay so once you have created all that click on save and close the taxonomy once you have done that it will create a file in your solution folder so this is my solution under document processing you will see the taxonomy json file which will contain the taxonomy data similar to this so for all document types you will have uh, the taxonomy information all right Once you have done that, next thing is to create, start creating the workflow. So by default, you have one single workflow in this orchestration process. You may see a flowchart by default without any of these activities. You will only see the start. So the first section is to get the values from those assets we created. So I have created a simple sequence and inside that I have the set of get asset activities to get the document storage path output data folder path invoice training data and TO training data so basically I'll be using uh, instead of Without using the API key for now, I'll be using all four assets over here. Okay. So if we take one asset, I have provided the asset name and where the asset is placed in orchestrator so by default if you do not provide this orchestrator folder path it will look for this asset in the default folder which is this folder over here but since i don't have those there these are some of the old assets that i have created i have the latest asset in the document understanding folder so that's why i'm providing the orchestrator folder path as document understanding and the output is a text or a string variable which is named as document storage file path and similarly for all four assets I have those variables created over here document storage file path first one output data folder for the second variable 
So now it's training data part and then we are training data. All four are available and the scope is document orchestration. So this sequence is named as initialize. But I have set the scope of these variables to document orchestration because it's the outermost sequence or the flowchart we have. Because I need to pass that data into the second sequence where I will do the actual processing. So that's why I have placed the scope as document orchestration. So keep a close eye on this scope because we this scope is very important in this section because a lot of parallel processing will be happening. So getting back to initialize. Once I have taken the get assets, so you can see that I haven't taken the API key yet. I will explain why when I get to that point. So what I'm going to do next is, so remember in our scenario, there was a requirement where the user need to select the input file path, the file path where the, the documents are placed, which is the input files folder in our case. It's this folder. So since we are not going to hard code or provide this in any asset, and since the user is selecting that, I'm using select folder activity. So you can easily find it over here select we have two activities i'm using select folder because we are providing the folder path and and that variable is again set with the scope and the variable is document folder path and it's again the scope is the outermost sequence why i have placed it in a try catch is because once that pop-up appear, user might not select the folder path and he might just close it. In that case, this activity is going to throw an exception because the user didn't select the folder path. So in that case, we need to handle that and we need to check whether the folder path is actually provided or not. So that's why I'm using a try catch in case the user didn't provide and just close the pop-up it should go into exception and it will log the message with the log level error saying user did not provide the folder path so i'm not going to throw the exception i'll be using this variable itself to check whether the user provided it or not if the user did not provide this variable should be null so once we have done that now going back to my main sequence where i have a decision activity a flow decision which is this activity in here i'm checking whether this folder path is null or empty so if it is not null or empty i'm going to go ahead and process the document because the user has provided a file path and if the user has not provided a file path i'm not going to do anything so when this is true i'll be getting into our second sequence where we be processing the documents this sequence is called process document inside this so this is where all the complex stuff happen so the first step we need to do once we get here is to get all the files or the file paths available in the folder that the user provided so user provided the document folder path and i'm going to use a assign to read all the document paths inside that folder. So how we are going to configure the assign? Go to value. I'll be using directory, get files, and give the folder, folder path, which you got from the select folder activity. So this 
folder path it will get all the files from there and place it in a string array where it will have all the file paths for each and every document inside that folder so this document paths variable as you see over here is of string array you can find that type of uh, so if it is not available in this drop down you just need to go to array and select string and it will create a string array for you so once you have configured that next activity is to load the taxonomy so for this you have an activity called load taxonomy under intelligent OCR just drag it over here and you just need to set the output to a variable called doc taxonomy so you can easily create the variables you just need to uh, press ctrl k over here and it will ask to give the variable name and type the variable and press enter and it will create that variable of the document taxonomy type so i'm going to undo my change right. so it's doc taxonomy which i have over here so again look at the scope the scope is process document which is the this sequence over here and the next part is where we are going to process our files parallelly so usually uh, if we use a loop each file will be processed in a sequential order which means you will process only one file at a time and that is not the most effective way so what's the effective way of doing it is process each document parallel because each document does not depend on one another so we can process it parallelly so we can easily do that by using a for each so not the usual for each we have here we need to use the parallel for each which enables us to process each item parallelly so if you have five documents all five documents will be processed parallelly so it's based on your processing power and a lot of things depend on it but uh, it will process documents uh, parallelly up to a certain extent depending on your processing power so drag that activity over here and provide the document path variable so in this activity you are providing the document paths array and change the type argument to string because each file path in the array is of type string and for each item by default this will be as item change it to doc item which means for each document item so basically for each document path so once we have said that inside this parallel for each we have another sequence so this is where all the complexity starts because we are doing parallel execution we need to place our variables very carefully otherwise it's going to uh, throw errors or you might see any uh, you might come across different issues so rename this sequence as process one file so all the steps that are needed to process a file 
will be placed inside this sequence and all the variables that are needed to process that file will also be inside this sequence. Okay, you cannot have any variables outside this. So we already have some variables outside which are coming from the document orchestration. So these things can be there because these are common to all the documents because these are just folder parts. But the variables that are unique, the variables that hold data for each document uniquely, those things has to be inside this sequence. So from here onwards, all the variables you create is going to be inside process one file. Now the first step is to get the API key. So I'm using get credential, get credential activity to get the API key. So the asset type is doc API key and the folder path is again document understanding because I have this created inside that folder. I'm not worried about the username. I'm taking the password into document understanding API key, which is of type secure string. So this has the API key encrypted inside and no one can see it. So look at the scope carefully. It's process one file scope, which means it's inside this scope. Next, we are having a multiple assign where we have different uh, basically where we have three variables classification exception validation exception and require manual classification so why we have these variables is because since assuming that we have gone through the basics you might have noticed that if you open the classification station or uh, classification action in action center or even validation station there is an option to mark the document as an exception so in or else if you open the validation station or classification station if you just close it without validating it will throw an error saying it's an exception exception document so we need to hold those exceptions to build our process in a successful way without running into errors because even though the user mark it as exception we should we should log the exception and proceed with the next steps so that's why we are going to track it and to set the stage to reset the flow because we are talking about processing one file here irrespective of the, the spiral or uh, sequential you just need to think the steps that it should follow so to reset we are going to have two variables as classification exception and validation exception and the data type of that is of exception so this is system exception you can find them in browse you just need to type system.exception and you can find that variable type So you have to create two variables as exception again inside process one file which is inside this sequence and assign both to nothing because there won't be any exceptions at the beginning. And I have another variable over here require manual classification which means once the document is digitized and when you get to classification uh, section you are going to decide whether you need to 
classify that document manually or whether it can be automatically classified. How we are going to do that? We'll talk about that in the next section. So for now, we'll just create this variable. Require manual classification of type boolean as you see here. And again, the scope is process one file. Why we have these variables in scope process one file is because these are unique to each and every document. So once you have done that and assign that to false, next step is the digitized document data, which again you can find that activity under intelligent OCR digitized document the document path is going to be the variable you have mentioned in your parallel for each in my case it's doc item of type string so the document path is that because it contains the path for the document and this activity gives you two outputs it's going to be document object model and document text so again get to this point press ctrl k and type the variable name for document object model in my case it's doc object model and for document text it's doc text so pressing ctrl k and creating the variable by itself will be easy for you so that it will create it will identify the required uh, data type and create the variable in that data type. So if you check here, document object model is of type document, doc text is of type string. And again, these two are in the process one file scope. So to do this, I also need OCR engine. So as I explained at the beginning, I am using the OmniFetch OCR. So that's why I am using that over here. I just drag it and I haven't done anything over here. So one important point to understand here is this OCR engine is not used all the time. If the document is a native PDF file, or if the document is computer generated, it will not be using the OCR. It will just digitize the document because it's already in some sort of a digital font. But if the document is a scanned copy or if it's an image, it will use this OCR engine to convert into to a digital format and to get the data as a string and as an object model, which basically it's this object model is used to show the document in the validation station or classification station as an image. So, once you have got to this point, next step is the classification. So, we'll talk about the classification because we have a lot of things to discuss there in the next video. So, up to this point, uh, carefully create these variables and place these activities and we have up to this point we have discussed about setting up the environment uh, how to parallel process documents using parallel for each and digitization and also creating the taxonomy so in the next video, we will talk about how we are going to use the classification. And until then, uh, create your workflow up to this point and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.